tell you, we're going to get ready now to uh, bring up our, our, our praise team. Amen? Yeah. We're going to bring up our praise team and let them worship and song. Because without a sermon, you must still have praise and worship. Amen? Amen. God inhabits the praise of his people. Yeah. Whenever we sing songs about God, really, don't you know that whenever you sing a song about God, it's really saying that you're making a joyful noise. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you can sing well or not. If your heart is in the right place to God, it's a joyful noise. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Because it's a true song coming out of your heart. Amen? Amen. So once, well, now we're going to get ready and our praise team will be making their way to the pulpit, to the stage. To give us some praise and worship songs led by our sister Andrea, the anointed prophetess, Lord God, who speaks the word without any fear. Amen. <laughs> so let's bring them to the stage. Come on. <laughs> Somebody, faithful, give them a round of applause as they come to the stage. Amen. Hallelujah.
beat to drop, it's not gonna drop. Waymaker, waymaker, lyrical worker, promise keeper, hide in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Is he a waymaker? Yes, oh, 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 waymaker, lyrical worker. Come on, y'all. Let's sing every praise, because it definitely 
belongs to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, I hope y'all are ready. Here we go. Every praise, every praise. Every praise. Come on. Oh, yes. 
you got to tell your situations. And that's what you have to tell your challenges. Sometimes that's what you got to tell your children. Sometimes that's what you got to tell your boyfriend. Sometimes that's what you got to tell your girlfriend. Sometimes that's what you better say to those bills. That victory belongs to Jesus. You better look that doctor in the eye and say, I heard what you have to say. And thank you for doing your job. The victory belongs to Jesus. I'm going to tell my co-worker's testimony. She was praising God in the office this week because the doctors were getting ready to perform a major procedure on her because she's been fighting a, an illness that they told her they could not be without performing this procedure. But she said for some reason, the surgeon kept saying, if we have to perform the procedure. But her doctor kept saying, when we perform the procedure. I said the surgeon kept saying, if we have to perform it, but the doctor kept saying, when we have to perform it. She said it was something that stood out in that. And I said, that's because God was trying to let you know that while the devil is saying, when we perform it, like he's going to preach today, there's an if in God. Like he's going to preach today. He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. But that all started with an if. I said, well, you did better entertain an if because the surgeon and the doctor had to let her know on Friday there will be no procedure. There will be no procedure. And she broke out into a praise right there in her office. Amen. Amen. Because we serve a God that lets us know it's not necessarily when. Hmm. You better keep that if on the table. If. But what's our part? We're going to bring Pastor Jones up so he can tell us about our part that we have to play to move us sometimes from the winds to the ifs and from the ifs to the winds. While you're on your feet, go ahead and put your hands together for our pastor, Pastor Willis Jones, as he comes to bring us a mighty, 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 mighty word. Amen. Oh, you can do better than that. Put your hands together for the man of God.
But in order for mankind to be redeemed, there had to be a perfect sacrifice. Amen. A sacrifice without spot or blemish yes. or any such thing on his record. I'm excited this morning. We greet Facebook land and those of you that are here. We've had a lot of technical problems, amen, with our system. But God is still is going to get the glory. Uh -huh. but, but. Yes, we've had a lot of issues, amen, with the Facebook, Internet, and this, that, and the other. But we can't focus on that. No, we got to just, if we, when the technology messed up, just drop it and can it and keep going. Amen. I remember the time we didn't have no technology, and I, and I preached harder then than, 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 than now. Amen. It ain't about the technology. It's about the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Yes. It's about the power of God, amen, resonating throughout the congregation, amen, and, and, and lives and hearts and minds are changed yes. because of the word and not technology. Yes. But however, amen, we certainly thank God this morning, amen, for him gracing us, and we're going to uh, we have a challenging word for the day, and, and, and God put it in my spirit, amen, and I just thank God, amen, to know, amen, that we, uh, the president has been searching for answers. Dr. Fauci, the Dr. Fauci, he, the, the, the renowned doctor on CNN, he's been searching for answers. See, the CDC and the FDA, everybody is searching for answers to this problem, amen, that see. Seeming that nobody has had an answer for. They went to Rome, tried to ask questions to them, but they said, we got the same problem. Right. <laughs> they got the same problem in London. They got the same problem in, 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 in Russia. They got the same problem in China. The problem is really everywhere. Right. That's the reason why the problem is labeled pandemic. Right. And pandemic just simply said, man, that there's no place to run. It lets you know, man, there's no hiding place. And whenever you have a problem, man, that gives you no, no outlet or no hiding place, you need to be searching higher than where you're looking. You see, we got to stop trying to figure out our own problem, man, and try to solve the problem in our own energy. Intellect is not the answer. Trusting God is. Let me say that again. I said, I said, intellect is not the answer. Trust in God, is. Right. You can put your trust in God. Your intellect, amen, won't matter. Right. It doesn't matter about how many degrees you have, amen, how, how many scientists, amen, are researching this issue. The answer is still in the hands of God. All right. All right. All right. I'm just so excited this morning to know, amen, that he's given me a consolation. I feel real calm about this, mighty man, because we're looking for new answers, new solutions. But there are no new solutions, Brother Jesse. The solution is still the same. Amen. The solution is still the same. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yes, no man can get to the Father or through any crisis Amen. that you're going through. Unless you come through me. Come on now. We got to go back to him. We gotta go back. We're going through the wrong. We're going through the wrong door. Door number one and door number two. That's the wrong door. That's the You playing TikTok, man, with the wrong door. Jesus says, cancel all those other doors. And remember, there's only one way. I am the way. Tell your neighbor that Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. He is the only way. The only way. I'm just so glad this morning, man, to know with this other word of pray, man, we're going to pull right off. Yes. Get your civil wear out, your spirit, your civil wear out, man, and put your napkin around your neck, man, because you will spill nothing on your dress. <laughs> we want the Holy Ghost, man, to just have his own way. Yeah. Glory, hallelujah. God, man, has charged us up through the, uh, the, the worship service was awesome and elevated, and, and now we got to let the word of God, amen. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for this preaching opportunity. We thank you, Lord God, for you, you gracing us, oh Father God. And, and we ask you, Father God, right now, that, that if you would just grace this sanctuary, that you would grace the sanctuary with your presence, that you would saturate the very atmosphere, oh Father God, through the internet and through everywhere else, Father God, that we'll be heard. And we pray, Father God, right now, that you may be heard and that you may be uh, 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 on exhibition today, oh Lord God, and that your word may be heard in clarity and through the truth. Yeah. We pray, oh Lord God, that you would just have 
your own divine way. Uh, allow me to decrease and allow the Holy Ghost in me to increase. In Jesus' name, amen. We have a challenging subject for today. And the subject is simply, amen, uh, uh, God has given us the answer to the problem. How many believe that? I said, God has already given us the answer to the problem. We're searching everywhere for new answers. We're searching, amen, high and low, amen, to try to find out what the scientists are saying. We want to hear, amen, what 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 CDC gonna say tomorrow about the, uh, about um, approving some some some, some 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 drugs, amen, that they got out? We're trying to find out whether the FDA, man, can, can, can sign off, amen, on some of this stuff that's going on. And Dr. Fauci says he don't know which way to turn, and he's the chief doctor. And so what you got to understand, amen, is that our trust and confidence is not in Dr. Fauci. Our trust and confidence should be in Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If I'm not mistaken, Dr. Fauci puts his pants on one leg at a time. And Jesus don't even, Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost ain't got on no pants. Look, Jesus is still the answer. Regardless of how you look at it, he showed me a man and gave me, a, gave me justice in my spirit. He said, look at Hebrews 13 and 8. Hebrews 13 and 8 says something very profound. Hebrews 13 and 8 says that Jesus Christ is the same. Right. Yesterday, today, today and forevermore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the Hebrew writers trying to get you to understand is that whatever the whatever, whatever answer God gave in the Old Testament is still the same answer that He's giving in the New Testament. That's right. Right. He gave the answer, man, in the Old Testament through His commandments. He gave us, man, the way out, man, that we would obey His commandments. And then He came over to the Gospel in Jesus' day, man. And Jesus lived and preached the gospel, man, in uh, uh, through, uh, as he was living here on earth. And he said that my word will still be the same. That's right. Forevermore. If Jesus said it, that settles it. So what we're looking at this morning, amen, text, uh, textual wise, is coming from 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 11 through 15. What we find here in this particular text is King, King Solomon, a man who was King David's son, who took the throne uh, 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 after he was succeeded. Uh, 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 he took the throne, a man, and God gave him the recognition, a man, that his daddy couldn't get. God allowed him to build the temple, a man, that he wouldn't allow his daddy to build. And let me tell you one thing, even though God may allow you to do some things, amen, God still has stipulations and requirements after you do it. Amen. Just because you build a house in the name of the Lord doesn't mean, amen, that that's the end of the story. Because there are some things, amen, that you have to do after the house is built. Yeah. After the house is built, amen, there are some things that you got to do, the guidelines that you must follow, amen, in order for God, amen, to show up, amen, uh, in your situation. God wants to bless us. God wants to let you know, amen, that, 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 that he has already got the victory and we can have the victory through him. Right. If you ever get a victory, man, it's not in your own energy, but the victory comes through Jesus. Yeah. Right. My Bible tells me, amen, that uh, 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 the, the, church, the church needs to realize, amen, that if you're a child of God, amen, don't you be alarmed, amen, about the trials and tribulations that you go through. Because the Bible tells it, man, that, 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 that you will go through trials and tribulations even though you're saved and sanctified, you're still going to have some issues. That's right. Right. That's right. I think the Apostle Paul said to Timothy, yea, and all that shall live God in Christ Jesus, that, they shall, that we shall suffer persecution. Right. We're going to go through some stuff, amen. But just because you're going through something, amen, doesn't mean you got to park in it. As long as I'm moving in, amen, after a while I'm going to run out. Yeah. All right. Say that. If you keep moving in something, eventually you're going to move right through it. All right. But can you trust God long enough? Yeah. Can you trust God long enough yeah. for him to allow you to come out of what you're going through? No, we find, amen, here in this particular text, amen, that King Solomon had built the temple, amen, for God. He had built a temple, amen, for God to make sacrifice.
sacrifices in, uh, uh, in on his behalf. And God, amen, let King Solomon know that he had already, he had approved, amen, uh, 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 and heard his prayer as he dedicated the temple uh, uh, to him and on his behalf. God says, I have chosen this place, amen, uh, uh, to be a place of sacrifice on his behalf. But you know what I'm saying? Just because God chose the place uh, for, for, to be a sacrifice on his behalf, Solomon, God gave Solomon some very rigid instructions as to what the people would have to do. God always, God, God always, amen, has a requirement for us, amen, when he gives us uh, uh, his word. So it says, amen, uh, uh, it read it in your hearing, starting in verse 11, she'll put it on the screen, amen, so you can just uh, uh, examine it as we read it. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 11 through 15. As she puts it on the screen, it says, Then the word of the Lord came unto, excuse me, Then the word of the Lord came, well, said, Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord. Right. And what? And the king's house. And all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord and in his own house, he prospered it effectively. Yes. God allowed him to build, God allowed him to build a, a beautiful house. God allowed him to build a luxurious house. And also to build his own personal house. But it, but it says, amen, in the next verse, and the, uh, uh, look at it. And the Lord appeared uh, uh, unto Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer. I have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. And look what he says. He says, but this is, this is where it gets a little touchy. See, God said, man, that, 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 that this won't happen unless sin comes into play. The only reason why God would send any kind of disaster or, or, or calamity on his people is because sin has come into play. God hates Turn your neighbor to God hates sin. God hates sin. And, and look, and, and God has not changed his mind about what he hates. Whatever he hated in the Old Testament, he still hates in the New Testament. Yeah. Can somebody say amen? I know amen. We say we're living in a time, amen, where everything goes and everything and that we, we can have it our way. No, you can't have it your way because this is still God's word. Come on now. My children couldn't have it that way in my house. Even though they live there, they realize the man that 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 wow, this is that. And, and, and when you want to have it your way, you got to get out here and get your own. Now. There you go. And as long as we're in God's world, the world that He created, the world that He made, Amen. He sets the rules and regulations as to how this world going to be ran. It's not up for folks. It's not for up for you, the man, to try to change the order that God set up. God will not allow no man, nobody, to change the order and the structure. From his plan. And so he said, if you try to do that, he said, this may happen to you. He said, if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or even if I send pestilence among my people, and the word pestilence simply means disease and calamity. Yeah. Right. Don't you tell me, man, God ain't, God ain't, didn't endorse this. See, God, don't nothing happen without God's permission. Come on. Preach hey, 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 it. Preach it. The devil is a lie. If the devil could just do his own thing, then God might just sit down. Come on now. The devil, the devil can do no more than God allows. Whatever attack the devil launches on you, God allows it. He couldn't attack Job because God had to lie. God gave the devil permission to attack him. Come on now. The devil said, I've been parading around his house for a long time. I've been watching and peeping him in, but I can't get to him because you got him head in. But even the devil got better sense than some of you. The devil said, man, but if you move that head. Come on now. Am I right about it? The devil told God, if you move that head, that you got him healed in. I'll make him curse you to your face. And God gave him permission. Because he knew he was because he knew Job was committed. God gave the devil permission to attack him because God knew that Job was already sold out and committed. My question this morning, are you sold out? My question to you this morning, 
are you in it for the long haul? My question this morning, man, are you willing to stand and continue to stand even when the pressure gets hot? Paul said, when I've done all to stand. He said, when you've done all to stand, stand in it. Keep on standing. And so the Lord tells Solomon, he puts that if clause up there. He said, you know, when the people mess up, when the people, man, derail and get off track, I don't care about, okay, I know this is a fabulous house you built, but this house won't mean nothing. Because when the people fall into sin, God says, man, he can shut up heaven. That there be no rain. Yeah. And he needs to look. When, when, when he said, who oh, he said doing it? He said, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Don't you get this thing twisted, man, acting like something just happened uh, out of it. God doesn't know I am responsible yeah. for what's going on. God is responsible Amen. for sending these plagues and problems in your life when you abandon him. You cannot successfully abandon God and get away with it. Let me say it again. You will not successfully abandon God and be able to get away with it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you know what thing, brothers and sisters? Glory. God said, man, if he Glory. did these three things, shut the heaven up, create the famine, called the locusts of the valley of the land, create the famine, and sending pestilence and disease among the people. You would think that God would send pestilence and disease among the people. God would do whatever he feels like doing. God doesn't have to answer to anybody as to what he does. There's nobody, man, that can question his authority. You cannot appeal your case to the Supreme Court against God. Because God is in absolute authority. God is 100% in charge. There's no one bigger than him. There's no one better than him. There's no one with much power as he has. If I'm not mistaken, we need to go back to the beginning of the Bible. In the beginning of the Bible, it didn't say you created nothing. It didn't say I created nothing. But the Bible says, Brother Jesse, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Can somebody say that? If God created, I believe that he's in charge. Can somebody say that? I said, if he created this world, he's in charge. I don't care how many, how many votes you get it about uh, uh, up in the Supreme Court, how many votes the White House gives, how many rules they're trying to change that goes against God's values, God will not honor that. God does not honor anything that he that he's already instituted to be wrong. Right. If God says something wrong, you can't vote it. You can't vote on the change. God, what God, God decisions are not up for debate. No. Whatever God decision is about anything, it's fine. Right. So that tells me that whatever God says, that sells it. Can somebody say amen? amen. But you know one thing? God gave you these gift clauses here as to what he, what he would do when people fall into sin. And even though you're in this house, this house, I'm going to recognize it, man, as a place of sacrifice where you can pray and call on my name and I honor that. But he said, man, that, 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 but when you get off track, and let me say one thing, America's gotten off track. Many of us this morning, if you be honest, we've gotten off track. A lot of us, man, we have left and abandoned our first love. A lot of us, man, we have left God, man, whether you want to admit it or not. A lot of us, man, we walked out on God, and man, and, and we're looking for God, and man, to work wonders in our life. Right. Yeah. How can you, how can you expect a God, and man, to, 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 to be on your side when you have abandoned Him? Right. All right, all right. But look at the next verse, verse fourteen goes on to say, "There's something that, that the people can do." He says, "If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face." And turn from their wicked ways. He said, Then will I hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. Yeah, yeah. That next verse, amen, verse 15. She could add that, and it says, and, and, and look what the Lord said. Now my eyes shall be open, and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. All right. God will hear you. When you honor him. Yes, Check somebody say amen. God will hear you when you honor him. Hallelujah. This text, amen, is so challenging. 
amen, because it lets us know the King Solomon, amen, had built this great house for God, the house, amen, that he built in God's honor, the temple, the, the, the great temple, amen, that was no other temple like it. And God, amen, told him, amen, that he had, he had heard his prayer, the prayer of dedication as he dedicated the house to God. And God said, amen, that I have heard your prayer, amen, and I have accepted this place, amen, as the place that I'm going to make, allow you to make sacrifices on my behalf. God reminded Solomon that when, he didn't say, he, look, he didn't say, look, he said, when the people fall into sin, and when the people begin to walk in disobedience to his word and his statutes, he said, the three things that he said I would do, I would shut up heaven, number one, I would uh, 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 call the famine in the land, and I would also send the pestilence, yeah. which is diseases, and all types of plagues in the land. Oh. I think right now the whole world is experiencing this pandemic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Our children are dying, children are dying, and when I would, when it starts affecting our children, mm. it gets close to home. Oh, yeah. I've never seen so many little children, I mean, in hospitals like we see right now. I've never seen so many people, man, just falling dead, left and right. Now, since I've been this is the first time I've ever seen something this bad. And I believe that everybody else has said the same thing. We've never seen them like this. But God, in, in spite of all that's going on, he's still protecting us. He is, he's been keeping us. Can somebody say that? I say in spite of how bad everything is, God is still protecting us. God says, and when I thought about this, I looked at it real carefully. He said, I will send pestilence among the people, which is disease and sickness. But you know one thing? What God did against sin, let me say this again. What God did against sin in Solomon's day, guess what? It had changed. God is still the same God today as he was yesterday. And the Hebrew writer says he's the same yesterday in the Old Testament as he is in the New Testament under the gospel. And he will always be the same. God is immutable. God's word is ever settled. Whatever God, whatever God has said in the past, he, does, he holds to it too right now. Can somebody say amen? I, I want to say to you this morning, for those of you who, who, who are listening, God, what God did to the people yesterday, how he punished them, amen, and how he allowed all of these calamities and, 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 and diseases and pestilence to come in, on yesterday. He's the same God today. Because the reason why I can't say that because sin always carries a negative consequence. You cannot sin successfully and get away with it. There are no successful sinners. You may think you're getting away, man, but God wouldn't want you to remind you, man, that his eye is open to everything that's going on. God sees everything. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But I want to say this morning, man, that God wants me to tell you, man, that we can, even though we're in a bad situation, even though we're in a bad uh, 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 pandemic and the world, man, is on the edge and looks like we don't know which way to turn, there's still an answer to the problem. God, look, even if the world don't change, the church needs to stand up. Right. And so again, I said, if the world doesn't do anything, right. the church has enough authority and power to shut this problem down. Right, right. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Who believe it? I said, the church has been given the power and authority That's right. to shut this whole problem down. That's right. Jesus said, amen, that, that, that the church that he built, amen, he said, upon this rock, I will build my church. And the very gates of hell should not be able to prevail against it. Yeah. He, told, he said, man, in St. Mark, in St. Matthew 16, 19, he said, I have given the church the keys to the kingdom. Oh, and whatever the church, man, binds on earth, shall be bound in hell. Right. And whatever the church loses on earth, right. shall be loosed in hell. Mm -hmm. If the sinners don't never do nothing else, nothing to change that situation, the church has been given the, the power and the authority to change this problem. Amen. If we go down on our knees and go back to that, go back to our old landmark, go back to Jesus like we used to, go back to man to pray to God like we used to, go back and call him on his name like we used to, then God will begin to move just because 
because we are just because we are doing it. God still honors the church. He said the gates of hell. The pandemic is one of the gates of hell. The disease is the gate of hell. Problem in your family is the gate of hell. Problem in your job is sometimes a gate of hell. Whichever kind of way the devil can attack you is another gate. A gate to tie you down, a gate to break you down. But I've come to tell the church this morning that if you're a child of God, he won't be to tell you this morning that the battle is not yours. If you're a child of God this morning, the battle is not yours, but the battle belongs to God. God, amen, said the man that he'll fight your battle. Come on. If you would just hold your rope and stay true to his word. You got to stay true to God's word. And you got to learn to just, if the things don't change right away, you got to learn, amen, to learn the art of using patience, amen. Everything don't change instantly. Everything don't change overnight. I just said, what day that way? Upon the law. Shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Come on. But the blessing is for waiters only. God is not using the microwave. God is using, man, the old fashioned way. He wants you to learn how to wait. Come on. Whatever happened to Green's cooking cook four hours on the stove? <laughs> Whatever happened to the, the pinto beans Mama put on this, this morning? When I get out of school, they still cook. <laughs> Everything right now, we want it in two minutes. Two minutes or less. We're living in a microwave age. Everybody want it right now. My brother-in-law prayed to pray. When he prayed, every time he prayed, right now, Lord. Right now. Can I tell you this morning, you don't have the, uh, the authority uh, and the privilege to order God around and tell him when to do it. God moves in his own time. I tell my brother-in-law, son, look, Lomax, God wants me to tell you that you need to stop telling him to do everything right now. <laughs> he didn't pray no prayer unless he ended it right now. Whatever he asked God for, he wanted it right now. Whatever happened to us being able to wait on the Lord? Wait on the Lord. David said, wait on the Lord. Then again, I say, wait. Glory. Hallelujah. We got to realize that the church has been given the, given the keys. God didn't give the world the keys. God didn't give the government the keys. The doctors don't have the keys. The scientists are still doing research. They don't have the keys. The keys have been given to the church. Jesus said, I've given you the keys of the kingdom. And whatever you pray for and you and you bind it in that prayer on earth, it shall be heard and bound in hell. Can somebody say amen? amen. Is anybody, anybody bound anything and, 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 and saw God work? Is God still working? God is still working. God says, said amen as he gave us the condition as to how he was going to work on Solomon's behalf. God said that God gave him the three things that, that, that he could do, amen, against them when they sinned. But you know what thing? The Lord said, amen, in, in, in verse 14, God said the answer to the whole problem, Solomon, is right here before you. God says, I've already given you the answer to the problem. God gave us the answer to the problem, and that was 800 years ago, in Solomon's day. How do y'all think that same answer works today? Right. How do you believe this morning, man, that the same answer that he gave King Solomon, man, way back in his day, will work for your situation today? That's right. God said, man, my people, and my people is nobody but the church. Right. When he says my people, he's talking about my people is nobody but the one that he's been called out, the blood washed one, the one that I've chosen, the one that, that have chosen me as their Lord, they are my people. And so he said, if my people which are called by my name. If they shall, number one, humble themselves. Number, let, me, let me break this down. When God says, humble yourself, he means, amen, that you got to be willing, amen, to stop hee-hawing around trying to act like you didn't do nothing.
that cross. And most of us this morning, man, we, rather than saying we're wrong, we'll go all around the world and try to beat it. But, but God said, you need to humble yourself, man, and be able to admit that it's your fault, if it's your fault. You got to be able to take some ownership, man, for what is going on wrong, man, on your behalf. And stop trying to make it look like it, man, you haven't done anything wrong. If you humble yourself, man, it means that you just break down and just give it back to God by admitting that you were wrong. Humble yourself by admitting and confessing your sin, sin. First John 1 John 1.9 says, the man says it best, he said that you will confess your sin, that God is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from how much? He will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. But you've got to be willing to confess it. And you're not going to be able to confess anything if, you're not, if, you, if you don't humble yourself and come down off your house. Amen. Too many of us this morning, brother, you know you done mistreated somebody. You done said something bad about Pastor Bennett. And Pastor, and could you go to her and tell her that, well, if I said anything. <laughs> See, you, you know what you said. She know what you said. And rather than just admitting that you're wrong, you want to come and prep and say, if I said anything. You got to come down off of your high horse. You got to be willing this morning, man, to God, God said, if you humble yourself, break down, leave your pride at, at the altar. Leave your pride, drop your pride, and just fall prostrate before me and just cry out to me for repentance and forgiveness. Yeah. We got to humble ourselves. Can somebody say, man? Amen. Stop being too big and proud to humble yourself. God said, that, man, the second thing you got to do, he said, uh, not only are you to humble yourself, but he said, and you need to pray. Yeah. Pray for what, God? You need to pray to God, asking God to cleanse your heart, asking God to cleanse your mind, asking God to sanctify your spirit, man. Asking God, amen, to, 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 to help you, amen, to operate in forgiveness. Lord, God, help me to just be able to just swallow this situation up. I know they did me wrong. I know they hurt me. But Lord, God help me to be able to just, just, just to forgive them and keep going. Jesus set the example on Calvary's cross, amen. He's out there. He says, forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. Yeah. Now, I know Jesus said they didn't know what they were doing, but some of these devils today, they know what they're doing. <laughs> Let me say it again. I said, Jesus said to God, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They were crucifying the only Son of God. Mm. But these devils, these devils, man, they'll walk on you big, big as on the what? They'll railroad you. They'll, they will walk on you, man, and pick in your children. Yes, right. And act like, man, like, like my daddy did. Nothing wrong. You got to look. Humble, humble is the first thing, but when you pray to God, you need to ask God, God, forgive me for holding them so long. Unforgiveness don't hurt the other person. Unforgiveness hurts you. Whatever you're walking around in unforgiveness about, whatever it is, it's not hurting the other person at all. It's really hurting you. When you release the other person, God will free you. When you can forgive them regardless of whatever they did, God will begin to heal you. Yes, right. Healing starts when forgiveness starts. That's right. uh. Healing starts when forgiveness starts. Yes, right. I, we got some people, man, they won't forgive you with the same day life. Sure. Some folks said, I'm going to take it to the grave. Anybody heard about that? Yeah. Yeah. And you're you, you, you going to take it to the grave and you're going to wake up a man on the other side. You're going to wake up on the other side. And, and, and you're going to be just like that man I saw on CNN News in the hospital. He was in the hospital bed. And, and, and the doctor said, well, what do you want me to do? He said, can I get the shot? The doctor said, well, it's too late. <laughs> now, look, he's in the hospital bed, can't breathe, and he won't know, can I get the shot? Mm. The doctor said, well, you should have got the shot before you got the problem. The shot ain't going to help you now. Right. And a lot of people, man, are going to look at their eyes and hell, and they're going to tell God, God, I didn't mean to come here. And God will say, like, like the doctor said to the man, it's too late. If you lift your eyes up in hell,
hell, guess what? You made the choice. Hell is, hell, look, God don't send nobody to hell. People volunteer to go. God doesn't send anybody to hell. People volunteer to go. Say that. And you'll be surprised at how many people are volunteering to go to hell. Jesus said, Broadway is congested. Jesus said, wide is the gate, broad is the way that leads to destruction, and a whole lot of them go never. Amen. But Jesus said, but few is the, is the way, and narrow is the way that leads to life eternal, and few that be the path. On this holy road, you will have no problem, man, with a traffic jam. Mm. On this holy road, you have no problem, man, with bumper to bumper traffic. Mm. On this holy road, you may find a traveler every now and then. But I'm so glad this morning, I don't care who else is not on this road, my mind is made up. I want to stay on this road that leads to I want to stay on this road because I realize it, man, that this world is not my home. I'm just a pure from passing. You got to stop getting so glued to this world because you're going to leave it all back. The big house, you're going to leave it. The cars in the driveway, you're going to leave it. All the fur coats and big hats, you're going to leave them. <laughs> Come on now. And Job said it best. We brought nothing into this world. And it is absolutely certain that you'll take nothing out. I just thank God, man, for how he's blessed me to do so much and accomplish so much. But I already know, man, I'm trying, I'm, I'm, I'm get my house in order, get everything arranged so I can pass it on. Right. But I'm going to make sure I don't pass it on to the wrong hands. Hey, look, 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 if you got the children, make sure you screen them. <laughs> <laughs> don't throw your pearls among swine. Right. Don't throw your pearls among swine because they will trample on it. Right. Somebody said, well, who, who you going to leave all this stuff? I said, well, I got it all figured out. I ain't got to tell you, I ain't got to tell you nothing about it. That's right. But I already got to figure it out. Uh -huh. I got everything figured out. Because I'm leaving here. Amen. That's right. That's it. That's it. How many of y'all know you're leaving here? Jesus said it best. Jesus said it best in the Gospel of St. John. In St. John chapter 9, Jesus said it best. Uh, uh, when he was talking about the blind man that he saw, Jesus said, after he looked at the blind man, he said, you know what? I must work the work of him that sent me. Wow, it is day. For the night coming. But no man can work. You might not believe it, Jesse, but the night is coming. Your beard used to be black, but now it's gray. Your hair is gray, it used to be black. Amen. Your steps are slowing down. It used to be fast. Yes, sir. Your skin is wrinkling. And Miss Clara won't help you. <laughs> There's going to come a time when Miss Clara won't be able to change those Preach. wrinkles because it'll take too much of it to make a difference. <laughs> There's going to come a time in life when the whole bottle won't work. <laughs> <laughs> Glory. Because the night is coming. How many of the night coming? Oh, I come to tell you this morning, the night is coming. My, God, my, my son in law, he's energetic right now, just like I used to be. Yes, I'm still pretty energetic right now, as old as I am. Yes, but, 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 but you know what that is? But I know the night is coming. Mm -hmm. My wife will tell you, I'm complaining about my feet hurting, the night is coming. That's mm. it. Or oh, I'm complaining about I'm, I'm weak and my back is hurting, the night is coming. That's it. That's what it is. I just, I'm, just, I'm just not as enthusiastic as I used to be because the night is coming. The night is coming. The night is coming. And you need to be able to accept that. Right. Stop acting, like, man, like you're going to stay young all the time. Right. Jesus said, if he got the worth, the worth of, of him that sent him while he's still young, he said, because the night is coming. But no man, I don't care who you are, how strong you used to be, the night is coming. Mm. It don't matter about the body that you take, Pastor Bennett. It don't matter about the jogging that you do. That's right. The night is still coming. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we need to be able to face that this morning. Yes. God, God.
God is trying to help us. He said, I have the answer to your problem. And the answer is, is, is resting still in verse 14 on that, on that one word, if. There's a pivotal word that, that presents a tradition. If, my people, yes, Lord. that are called by my name, yes, shall so humble themselves yes. and pray. Mm -hmm. And now we have the third issue, and that is seek. What does it mean to seek God? Seeking God simply means that you seek God continually by drawing closer to God in your relationship with Him. In prayer, meditation, reading His Word, spending time with Him, and corporate worship. Yes, right. That's the way you grow strong. Corporate worship helps you. Yes. Because your testimony helps somebody else on yes. next to you. Uh -huh. Yo, you know, what God is doing in your house, amen, if we in corporate worship, you can share the testimony and you can receive a testimony yes. that may help you along your way. Yes. What God has done for others, He'll do the same thing for you. Yes, you need to realize, that, man, if you, if you want God to work on your behalf, you got to start spending more time with God. You got to start, man, man, seeking. The word seek, when, it, when you start seeking God's faith, that means that you are intentionally spending time with God, which is quality time. That's right. I feel so good in the morning because I, I know I look forward to my daughter sending me a, 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 a devotional for the morning. She already went, went through and she sent it right to me and I, I, I just get so blessed by it. I mean, everybody, it, it's just a blessing. It's a blessing to know that somebody is taking time yeah. to spend some time with God. Yeah. We, we are so hurry, we're so we're in such a big hurry that we ain't got time for God. We're in a hurry really going nowhere. We're always in a hurry. But God said, amen, those three things sound like not good enough. Humble yourself. Pray. Seek in his faith. That's not enough. He said, but once you've done those three things, he said, there's one other thing you need to do. And that is that you need to turn from your wicked ways. Right. Mm. Yeah. Let me tell you one thing, brothers and sisters. The reason why I know this is the reality, we all got some wicked ways. Yeah. You might not be right. I'm going to believe it. The Bible says, man, that there are none righteous. No, not one. Can somebody say amen? amen? I don't care how much you try to thank you so holy and you're better than somebody else, you still got some wrinkles in your car. There's still some stuff, man, or that you need to add out. There's still some problems, man, that you have not mastered. And some of them, man, got some low-down ways. Oh, boy, boy. Some people did the sweetest they can be, but even the sweetest person got some issues. All of us will struggle with something. My Bible tells me that King Solomon said these words to us. I think he said, man, he went on to say in 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 36, Solomon said that there is no man that sinned not. How many believe that? I know you're sitting here acting like you're holding it now, but you can sin in your thoughts. That's the why you ought to pray to God, God forgive me for my idle thoughts. I don't thought that passed through your mind. If you ain't careful, you, you start entertaining. Okay. Oh, yeah. Solomon said, there is no man that sinned not. You know what I'm saying? That's a broad statement. When somebody no. say that, that there is no man that sinned not. No man. Don't you sit in that, amen, like you're holier than that. I ain't seen nobody who was flawless. Moses was the meekest man that ever lived, and at the end, when he got to got ready to go to the promised land, he didn't make it because he messed up. Yeah. How did he mess up? Rather than speaking to the rock, he got mad and began to whoop the rock. Yeah. Yeah. You got to follow God's instruction. Yeah. God said, "Look, God let him hit the rock the first time. He just smoked the rock, but this time God don't never do nothing the same way." You need to listen and follow God's instruction. God said, Moses, I know you did it last time, but this time I didn't want you to speak to it. Yeah. And Moses got mad with the people, and some of these people will get on your last nerve. Am I right, Pastor Ben? Yeah. Some of these folks make you want to grab them and start draining the neck. <laughs> you, ever, you ever had a time where you shook your child, just shook them? If you ain't careful, if you ain't careful, man, you can shake them, man, and unconsciously, they'll be there, you'll be 
Sizce? You ain't got no standards. It don't, we got to stop 
trying to do what everybody else is doing. We have to stop allowing our children to be led and misled by peer pressure. Most of our children are not leaders. Most of our children are little followers. Little Johnny is so nice at home, but as soon as he get, 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 get to school, the teacher right y'all kind of knows about how little Johnny is acting up. But little Johnny acts one way at home, and he acts another way at school. Look, I said, look, Johnny acts one way at home, and acts another way at school. Your child, if he's really holding on to the values you taught him, he'll be the same way at school as he is at home. Say that. We got to begin to drill it in him. We got to begin to preach it to him, man. And we got to keep on working on the man so that so the day they be able to hold true to what you teach them. All right. Oh, yeah, sister, uh, sister, child, she's right. You just can't be talking about it. You got to live it. How in the world you expect your child to do right when they see you doing wrong? I want you to pay close attention to God says that He will heal from heaven. Yes, Lord. And He will forgive our sins. Mm -hmm. And He will heal the land. I think that if anybody, if there's ever been a time that the land needs to be healed, it's right now. Yes, yes, yes. If all of us right now can fall prostrate down our knees and just begin to crap it up about this problem that we're going through. This is, it is so serious because people are falling dead right around us. It used to be all across town and over there, but people are falling dead right, right, right around you. And if that many people falling dead right around you, it makes you look curious. How much further is it from you? We are not, look, God cannot, look, we may win the battle, but he did not say we were not going to have any casualties. Am I right? right? You may win the fight, but look how much damage you, that was done to you when the fight is over. Right. Right. I've seen boxers win the boxing match, and the man that won the fight looked like, looked like oh, the world he won, oh, he couldn't even see. <laughs> yeah. He couldn't even hit the floor, hit the man, hit the man, and at some a magnificent way, the guy that was hitting him and beating him, he looked off, and with, the, with his eyes almost closed, the boy, the man threw one punch. <laughs> <laughs> one last punch and hit him. And he hit the floor. Gained the one and lost in the fourth quarter. How about it? As the gained the one and lost in the fourth quarter. Don't you get so cocky that you think you got to make it. Right. Don't you feel like a man that uh, 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 nothing can get you. Right. There is no temptation taken us. Mm. But such as is common to man. Yeah. All the temptations we deal with, guess what? There's something that you're already familiar with. Yeah. It's bad to sit for the same, for the us to let the same thing keep knocking us down. It's bad that the same thing, man, keep flowing. Yeah. But Paul says, man, in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, there has no temptation that's come upon you, that is, that, but, but such as is coming to man, but God is faithful. It means that you can trust God, you can rely on God, that even though you're being tempted and challenged in this area, God says if you keep your eyes on him, he will enable you, amen, to master that temptation and be able to walk away clean. That's right. How can you believe that? Amen. You ain't get yeah. tell your neighbor. You ain't got to do it. Yeah. I don't care how you flirt with you, how cute you are. Oh, you look so good today. You take it and keep on moving. He told this other girl, she looked the same way. He, he just told ten six girls in the office the same thing. But it's only the weak sister that, that, that falls for and lose everything she got. Because, the, because he told her she looked so good. You need to realize the devil had changed his plan. The devil has not changed his plan nor his plan. Paul said, Jesus said in St. John 10, 10, that the thief cometh not but for the steal, kill, and to destroy. Amen. The devil was 
still has an assignment. He don't care how he get it done. He don't care what it takes to get you to do it. It ain't worth it. Ain't nothing worth it. Listen real good. Ain't nothing worth you walking with your lovely home and, and, and your beautiful family. Took right. for some no good joker who got everything he owned in a Walmart bag okay. in his car. <laughs> he tells you about how good you were. Everything he owns in a Walmart bag. And I was thinking you put the Walmart bag. But fifty year old man, after fifty years, all he got. Is it a Walmart man? And he's telling you about how good you look and what he can do for you. Turn your neighbor to keep it moving. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Tell that story to somebody. This time when people wake up and stop falling for the devil's uh, uh, lies. And it's flattering. He's flattering you. But flattery don't pay no bills. Flattery, man. Flattery will not pay none of your bills. They talk a good talk. When, when you mess around to get him at your house, you're a bad man, and he'll, he'll be driving your car. He'll be sitting at home with you at He'll be. You'll be getting, you, he'll be getting his allowance. You'll be giving him an allowance. You don't need no 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 man for your child. You already raised it to it. Why you gonna have a man to raise that children? If you are if you got children you take care of, why you gonna have no good joke who ain't doing nothing?
And by the way, that's 1 Peter 5 and 7. He said, cast all your cares and concerns on Jesus because he cares for you. Amen. He wants you to give it to him. And he will carry, amen, your load and give you peace. Yeah. Can somebody say amen? amen. Isaiah said it better. Isaiah said if you can get your mind straight and get your mind off of your dilemma, Isaiah said in Isaiah 26 and 3, yeah. that he will keep you in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on him. Brother and sister, we need to get our mind off of what's going on and begin to put our mind on the one that's able to solve. A lot of these things we can we'll never solve. A lot of these problems we'll never be able to understand. But I guarantee you one thing, if you could just wrap your mind around the one who's able to do it, if you could just wrap your mind around giving God and then all your burdens and all your problems, God said, man, if you do that, he'll give you peace. Do it by needing the peace this morning. Do it by needing the peace this morning. Peace in your storm. Peace in your dilemma. Peace in your struggle. But I'll tell you one thing. Jesus said it best. And I want you to hear, hear me real good. Jesus said in St. John 16, 33, I got the answer to your problem. He's telling you still, I got the answer to your problem. Jesus said, Amen. These things have I spoken unto you that you might have peace. Yes. In the world, you shall have problems. Yes, sir. In, I'm going to believe that. In, the, in this world, you shall have problems. Who believes that? Uh, amen. 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 But Jesus said, He knows you have a problem in this world. He said, But be of good cheer yes. because I have overcome the world. Yes. Brothers and sisters, if you could just. If you could just trust God yeah. and begin to just put your absolute trust in God, yeah. God will bail you out of whatever amen. dilemma you find yourself going through this morning. Amen. I want to say to you, amen, uh, 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 in closing, that the promises, amen, that the Lord made to Abraham in, the, uh, uh, in about the 12th chapter of the book of Genesis, God made a promise to Abraham. He told him, man, if you can, Abraham, if you can just leave your, if you can just leave your family, your yeah. family members, yeah. all, and all your kinfolk, leave, yeah. and go to the place that I will show you. Yeah. Jesus said, man, that he would lead him to a place, the place, amen, that he would show you. But I just got to be with him this morning to be able to follow Jesus. Hallelujah. But I want to say to you this morning, for, for time's sake, is that we can still turn our failed situation around. We can change the outcome of a negative situation. How can believe it? Even though it looks negative or helpless or hopeless, God said it's not helpless or hopeless if you put your trust in me. Trust God and allow God to work on your behalf. God has given us a clear word and it's all based on the condition. If you do, if you, if you humble yourself, if you pray, if you seek his faith, and if you turn from the wicked way, he said he will hear you, your prayer. He will forgive your sins because they're many. And he will heal the lady. The pandemic, I know, is out of control, but I still believe this morning. Well, the time I believe this morning, brother, that God still can stop. Yeah. I believe there's no problem going on in this whole world that God can't stop. Yeah. Am I right about it? Yeah. Whatever's going on, God can stop. Yeah. If you put your trust in it. Yeah. Faithful man, you heard it like we heard it firsthand. Amen. God is, has spoke to us and he let, he's not going to let us know that he has the answer mm -hmm. to our problem. Whatever problem it is you have, God says he already has the answer for that problem. Yeah. Look what he said. He told Abraham, get thee out of your country. Get, your, get away from your kid folk. Yeah. Get out of your daddy's house. Yeah. <laughs> and y'all and, and and, and, and will take you to a land that I'm going to show you. Hmm. And God blessed Abraham because he was what? Obedient. Amen. God can only bless you when you obey. Amen. God gave the stipulation, it's up to you to make a decision whether you're going to do it or not. Amen. Abraham left everybody, left everything, and God blessed him yeah. in ways that were more numerous than he could ever imagine. And he would do the same thing for you yes, that he did for Abraham on yesterday. Yes, and, 
by the way, brothers and sisters, as we close, we don't look like to close our service without giving you an invitation. Yes. And the invitation is simply, man, to let you know, man, that you can make direct contact with God in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. Yes, I think that Paul told us that, man, it's so easy to connect with God. He said, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that that, that, that Jesus Christ died for your sins sin, and, 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 and God raised him from the dead, yes. he said, you shall be saved. He said, the simple as that. Somebody says, brother, that sounds too easy. It is. It is. God says, it's so easy. All you got to do is be able to confess it further and to believe it in it. If you can confess it and believe it, God says, just from that, you will be saved. Give God some praise and hallelujah. God has given up them. All right. May God have a great day in Facebook, man. And may I have a great day. May God bless you. Amen. That was a good one there. We certainly thank God. Amen. God has given us something.